everybody, it's Doug here, Doug Mr. Guy on Board Game Geek, bringing you a new playthrough. We just, I wrapped up my playthrough of Zombicide Black Plague, uh, the disaster, and I'm moving on to something new. Now, I know there's a lot of playthroughs of this right now, but I said, what the heck. I was thinking about doing some other things, but this just really strikes a chord with me, and, and you know, being the type of channel that I have where I want to, you know, show games that, still, that tell stories that can be played solo, etc., etc., um, I thought I'd do this one again. Now this is Mansions of Madness Second Edition. I happen to have First Edition and the two major expansions, Call of the Wild and um, um, Forbidden Alchemy. And so I'm probably going to I'm going to include them in here because I haven't seen anybody else do that part yet. Not that I'm aware of on any playthroughs. So we're going to give that a try. And uh, as you know, this is a board game slash app driven game. Whereas the original Mansions of Madness used to have a keeper who ran the the game basically and was essentially the bad guy but not in a sense that you were just hell-bent to try and beat the heroes down. It was more like, well, I know when I played as a keeper, I kind of didn't want, I, I felt like a dungeon master, like role-playing game dungeon master, where, um, or game master, rather, where I was uh, helping the players, right? So, anyway, we're going to play Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. We're going to use the app that makes it fully cooperative, and we're going to set up a new game right now. So, let's get to it. Now, the first thing that happens is we're going to set up a new game, and you can see now, there are four different scenarios in the main game right here, and they vary in difficulty and length. We're going to do the short one, the Cycle of Eternity. Uh, it is a difficulty of two, and it's 60 to 90 minutes, so that's the one we're going to do first. And this is the one that most people are doing. And uh, it says, Cycle of Eternity, after a rash of disappearances, your investigations, your investigation brings you to a to the Vanderbilt Mansion during a meeting of a particular astronomical society. Can you unravel the mystery before the cycle of eternity turns once more? <laughs> of course, you know this is a horror-based game, so that's cool. I didn't say horror, I said horror. Everybody always makes that mistake. Okay, now, because, um, let me see, did I keep it selected? I did. It got, I got everybody in the kitchen sink in here, right? So, I think, though, um, we're going to play with, uh, you know, one thing I wish they did do is allow you to randomize this, because that would be cool. Um... I think we're going to play it. I don't know what any of their abilities are. I almost don't care. Uh, just as long as we have fun doing it, right? So let's do... Um, we'll do Ash Can Pete. And, you know, one of the ones I liked... I liked Amanda Sharp and, and Carolyn Fern from the other games. I also like Dexter Drake. We can do Ash Can Pete and Dexter Drake. Or do we want to do... it? Let's do a guy and a girl. Let's see who else we got. We could do... Uh, Father Mateo... Or Jenny Barnes. I always like Jenny Barnes in the original game, too. Um, we could do that. Let's do Jenny Barnes and um, and uh, Ash Can Pete. So I'm going to get their cards out. And here we are. I'm going to back. Right, so you can see the uh, app and the two characters. So here's one of our characters, Jenny Barnes. Now, I, didn't even, I haven't even looked at their special abilities, so we're going to have fun with this, right? Um, she's got 8 health and, eight, and 6 sanity. She's the dilettante. Her actions, uh, for an action, if you have no clues, gain 2 clues and discard a horror. So that's an action she can take, one of her 2 actions in a turn. And then you have Ash Campete. He's the drifter. He's got 7 and 7. It says you begin the game with uh, the Duke new, uh, unique item. We'll see that when we advance through the app. Now, um, you can see that they also have skills, strength, agility, observation, lore, influence, and will. And those are their stats right there. We'll see how that plays out. And, of course, there's this thing called backstory. This is the backstory of Ashcan Pete. So, let's take a look at that. It says, at night, Ashcan Pete sleeps wherever his travels take him. In a field, on a train, or maybe, if he's lucky, in a barn. He bunks with his loyal hound, his loyal hound dog, Duke, on one side, and his beat up guitar on the other. And sometimes when Ash Can Pete sleeps, he dreams. He dreams of haunted, tortured places and horrible creatures. When he wakes up, he knows that someone needs his help because his dreams are true. He could not say, however, he could not say how long he has been on the road, uh, living by his wits, but he can say for certain no place is too far to go help someone in need. And as long as Pete can help people, he is not likely to stop wandering anytime soon. That's Ashcan Pete's story. Now we're going to look at uh, Jenny Barnes, the dilettante. How these two came together in this story, I don't know. Uh, Jenny Barnes has spent the majority of her young life in pursuit of creature comforts, fine dining in the latest fashions. But 
During her most recent summer in Paris, she received a letter from her sister Isabel. In this letter, Isabel confessed that mysterious forces were aligning against her and that she feared she may fall victim to some paranormal threat. It was, it was the last year Jenny received, uh, the last letter Jenny received from her beloved sister. Jenny has since returned to the States to track down and, and investigate all occult occurrences she can find. Hardly a uh, wilting flower, she has proven herself a crack shot as well as a fearless and clever investigator of the unknown. Until Il Isabel's disappearance is explained, Jenny will never relent in her search and she will do so impeccably dressed. So that is Jenny Barnes, and we're going to get their figures out. I'm going to do that right now. Voila, like magic with the, the power of video. This is the miniature for Jenny Barnes. You can see she's a gun toter. Pretty cool, right? And it's a really nice. I like the miniatures, and this is Ash Can Pete right here with his hound dog Duke. And we're going to next, we're going to advance the app. So let me focus back in on that. Okay, so we're going to gain starting gear now so what we're going to do here is we're going to look and see what we get we're going to get bandages brass knuckles elder sign pendant kerosene lamp feed the mine and of course duke himself the dog okay well here are our starting items We've got duke and duke ha duke's an ally it says uh, ally at the start of your turn you may perform a trade action if you're in or, or if you are in any space within range range is three spaces or less um, okay, and Elder Sign equipped, Equipment. Roll one additional die when evading monsters. That's a good one. The Kerosene Lamp. You may discard this card to convert all clues to uh, successes when attacking, while attacking unarmed. That means you have to use the unarmed attack, and you'll, I'll explain that as a ghost. Equipment. Action. Discard to uh, up to two face down damage, then discard this. And then Brass Knuckles. Roll two additional dice when attacking unarmed. So we don't have the ability to attack unarmed very well, but we also need a Feed the Mind spell. Now how the spells work is you'll see that there are several Feed the Mind spells. So we're going to take them and kind of shuffle them up and give them a little boop, 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 and we're going to pick one. Now, who's going to do these? have these things? Because um, what we want to do is make sure that we divvy up the equipment. So uh, let's take a look at some stats now. Um, Fighting unarmed, Ashcan Pete is stronger. I think we'll give him the brass knuckles. Uh, we'll give Jenny the feed the mind spell. Of course, Duke is going to uh, go, go to Ashcan Pete as well. It's his faithful dog. Um, I think we'll do the. Let's see. We'll do the 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 pendant. Roll one additional die while evading monsters to Jenny. The bandages to. Um, to Ashcan and the Kerosene Lantern to Jenny again. Okay, that's good. Now, you also see on the app that each investigator gains two clues as well. So there's, there's we're going to get two clue tokens for each of our people. And I'm getting those out right now. Then I'm going to put the characters aside for a moment, and we're going to continue to uh, set up the game. All right, let's continue setting up. Now, we're going to learn about our location. Now, there's going to be a story here. So let's uh, listen in. Now, when I hit, uh, it says... From H.P. Lovecraft, the Shun House, from er, from even the greatest horrors, the greatest of horrors, irony is seldom absent. Sometimes it enters directly into the composition of the of the events, while sometimes relates only to the fortuitous position among the persons and places. H.P. Lovecraft. Okay, now when we begin the scenario. I'm going to turn it up so that you can make sure we hear the scenario storyline. Go in the wrong direction. And that way you'll be able to hear what the storyline is about. Let's get going. You slump into your office chair after another long day of interviews. You've been investigating the disappearances surrounding a wealthy neighborhood for two weeks, but you have nothing to show for it. The telephone rings. You answer and hear the panicked voice of an older man. Yes. Is this the investigator who visited the Vanderbilt estate? You flip through the files on your desk. William Vanderbilt, a wealthy bachelor, mother recently deceased. He has refused to meet with you, but you were able to speak to several members of his serving staff. This is Eugene, Mr. Vanderbilt's butler. I, I didn't know who else to call. The police think I'm crazy. Unnatural things have started happening here. I'm worried for my master. I, I think he's in danger. Please, help. Finally, a lead. 
you hang up the phone, throw on your coat, and leave for the Vanderbilt estate. Okay, so that's what's happening. You can see that we're going to head to the Vanderbilt estate and get going. So we're going to continue. And this is going to start to set up our game. So we're looking for a tile. It says your car rattles up to the uneven drive, pulling to a stop in front of the estate. I'm going to turn down the volume a bit now, just since we've seen the... That's the only time I believe that there's narration. So let's turn that down so it's not louder than me. And then we'll continue on. And we're going to have to get out tiles now. Um, oops, I didn't get the tile out. Let me stop and get that tile out. We're going to place our characters. Now, what is interesting, guys, is that you'll note that in... Uh, I've seen some other playthroughs where it's used the tiles just from the uh, base game, uh, the base second edition game. This tile, however, is from this foyer tile, which is the one that I got out, is from the uh, first edition game, and that's what it's called for. Because I've allowed those to be included, we're going to get to see them. So it says, you step into the warmth of the house, a strange stillness hangs in the air, and your footsteps echo through the quiet entrance. Place your investigator figures as indicated. Okay, so we're going to do that. From this point forward, I'm going to cut back and forth from the app. So right now we do know that, that our two investigators, Ash Campete and Jenny Barnes, have stepped into the foyer of the, the, the mansion. Now let's go back to the application. Okay, so now we've done that, we're going to continue, and it's going to con give us additional placement. So it's telling us to the right of the door sits a table with a small pile of papers. Place a search token as indicated. So what is a search token? Well, it's that big question mark, and it is a token that looks like this. So let's go back to the board, and we are going to place that on this table right here. Now, back to the app. I sincerely hope that more games come out like this, because the storytelling elements and the, the vast, uh, the variability of being able to use this app instead of cards or books or something is really amazing in conjunction with a board game. I hope I see more. Anyway, uh, by the way, one thing I will tell you is why did I only pick two characters? Because that's what you pick when you're playing a solo game. I could play with more if I wanted to, but uh, I haven't tried that yet, so we're going to stick with what it says to do. Okay, so let's continue on. Okay, now we have to place another clue token. It says a table with a telephone sits atop the staircase on the left. Place a search token as indicated. And that search token is going to go up in here. That's where the telephone is. Let's go back. Okay, let's continue on and see what it gives us next. A mysterious painting of a nighttime landscape looms over the lobby staircase. Place a search token as indicated. So as you can see, we already, that's right here, the painting. And you can see that we already have quite a bit to do just in this one room. All right, we're going to continue on. We place the painting. Ooh, did you hear that crashing, that sound? Got neat sound effects and everything. The silence is broken up, broken by the muffled shouts and sounds of crashing pots and pans coming from the door on your right. Place an explorer token as indicated. An explorer token is different looking. It looks like a lantern. And it is going to go right here on this door at the top of the stairs. Okay, let's continue on. What else do we have to look at? You notice a shelf st uh, stacked with books and other objects nearby. Pushing it in front of the door could prevent someone from, uh, or someone or something from coming through. Place a barricade as indicated. Okay, we will do that. Okay, here's the barricade token, and it's going to go right here in this corner, the corner of this room, uh, right next to this door. Okay, let's go back. What I might do in the future is set up a whole room for you, not take you through every step, but in the beginning, I definitely want you to see it. So. Let's continue. Okay, three other doors lead to the mansion. Place explore tokens on those. That's over here. You can see up here and over here. Okay, so we have an explore token here, an explore token here, an explore token there. Now let's go back to the app. Okay, let's continue on. What do we have to do now? Oh, now we get to start the game. Okay, we're gonna we'll do one turn. So this is gonna be the investigator's turn. Now, what do you get to do on a turn? Let's take a look at that. So we get the book out here, and this is the investigator's phase right here. It says, during the investigator's phase, the investigators each take one turn in the order of their choice. A turn consists of two actions, by the way. During an investigator's turn, that investigator performs, oh, there you go, up to two actions. We can do a move, a search, and explore, and interact, an, act, an act, attack action, or a trade action. There's also some rarely used actions. You can see push, set fire, steal action. Push is a weird one because, I mean, you got to be insane or something. You want to push your fellows around, but you could push a monster. Component actions are barricading a door or extinguishing a fire. And then we're, after we finish our player turns, we're going to go into the mythos phase. But right now, we're going to take our actions. So let's go to the table and do that. Now, we got some pretty easy ones to figure out here. So, so let's talk about a tile for a moment. 
Okay, now this particular tile is different. So I'll give you an example. Here is the starting tile from the base game. This is what that tile looks like. You can see that it's got a clear white line here. That means that this is actually two spaces. So it would have been faced this way. However, this whole section here is one space. So there's three total spaces in here. This tile, however, has quite a few. It's got the staircase right here is one space that includes this token. Then you got these two spaces and the two staircase spaces. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five spaces in here. Now we get to take two actions. I might as well start with good old Jenny Barnes. And I think for her first action, she's going to do a component action. Why not? I mean, we're just getting started here. So let's, uh, let's take her first action and do this. We're going to use the Feed the Mind spell. It says, action, you or another investigator within range become focused. Flip, then flip this card. Okay, she's going to do that. So what is focused? Here is a focused card. It says, you may discard this card to convert all um, clues to successes. And I'll show you how it works when we roll dice while resolving a test. And she's going to focus on herself because she's not as good a fighter as Ash can, but we want her to be prepared. So now this, remember, we picked this at random out of the several Feed the Mind spells. So now we have to flip it and see what happens. Feed the Mind. Your own memories flash before your eyes. We have to make a lore check. Um, yes, yeah, so she has a three. If you pass, we've got to make two. If you pass, you realize that one of your memories is relevant uh, to the case. Gain one clue. If you fail, we'll deal with that in a moment. So let's get some dice out and roll. Well, here's Jenny. She is currently focused, so she is going to be able to convert those. She also has two clues, which will be able to help her. And don't forget that if you have uh, if you have clues, gain, uh, or if you have no clues, gain two clues and discard a horror. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, now, though, we're going to roll dice. we got a bunch of dice. So here are the dice. They're eight-sided. They have basically two symbols on them, a success and a clue. If we roll a success, then that means we succeeded at least in that one. Now this time we have to get two. If we roll one of these, that means for if we spend a clue, we can convert it to a success. I like this mechanic, by the way. Um, and we're going to be using lore. So Jenny Barnes' lore is three. So we're going to get three dice. We don't have any ability to roll any other dice, but we do have the ability to convert clues. So hopefully we get lucky. Uh, we didn't have to. So she succeeded. She got two successes right there and that, but we don't need to convert it because all she needed to do was gain two. So we passed you realize that one of your memories is relevant to the case. Gain a clue. So, um, oh, then discard this card and gain another Feed the Mind spell. So what happens now is we're going to get the rest of the Feed the Minds. There's three or uh, four more in the spell deck, and we're going to pick another one. Boom, boom. We'll pick that one. That goes back into her hand. This one will go back into the pile to come back again later at some point. And... Um, she also gains another clue for her effort. And that was her first action. So good Jenny. Glad we didn't have to use her focused ability. Now, uh, guys, also keep in mind that uh, I, you know, I play a lot of games. And if you see me catching and making a mistake on film or something, please let me know. Though uh, this is guided quite heavily by the app, so I think we're going to be okay. All right, now let's, let's continue on. She's got a second action. Now, there is the, uh, this, this token at the top of the stairs, the painting. And um, I think, though... You know, we also had this horrible racket to the, I think it was over here. We might go that direction and see. No, it was, I think it was up here, actually, because that's where the barricade is. But I think what we're going to do, what she's going to do is investigate the painting. So we're gonna, she's going to meander on up to the top of the stairs there. It's not a move. This is one space. I'm just putting her figure up there for the sake of the game. And we're going to go back to the app now. Okay, so she is, Jenny's up here at the top of the stairs. Let's see what she sees. A mysterious painting of a landscape under a night sky overlooks the lavish entryway. We're going to spend her second action to search. And that, if you see the little arrow right there, that's, that's the indicator. So let's see what happens here. Shadowy figures can be seen amidst the landscape. However, something in the stars catches your interest. We have to make a lore check. Now, um, some will tell you that you need to do two, like you saw in the Feed the Mind spell. Some will tell you you need to do one success. This one, we don't know how many successes we need. We just know we're going to roll. So um, let's go back, roll the dice, and see what kind of successes we're going to get. Okay, here's what's relevant for her for this. I left her other items behind because they're not going to help her in this case. Uh, we are going to be making a lore check again. So three, we are focused, and we have three clue tokens. So hopefully she gets a decent amount of successes. Uh, she got one. Oh, no, I'm not going to use this because we only have one other. But she does have a clue. 
or a clue symbol. So we're going to spend one of our clue tokens and we're going to flip that over to a success. We got two total successes there. Hopefully that's enough. So we're going to go one, two, okay, and then we're going to confirm. You identify several of the specks of light in the sky as planets. They are all occupying the same section of the sky as if coming into alignment, not unlike the planets in the sky tonight. Beneath the painting, a plaque reads, in memory of Lilith Vanderbilt. Gain two clues and then discard this search token. So Jenny had some good luck there. She's going to get two more clues. Boom. There she's got four clues right now. That's awesome. And then we're going to discard this search token from the board. And that is going to be the end of Jenny's actions. Okay, well, you know, Ash can, he's all about helping people. So while there's interesting things to investigate here, we did hear a crash. I sure hope it, I don't, I don't remember. I think it's here. I don't remember uh, exactly from the beginning when it crashed. I think this was the first one I put down, or maybe it was that one. I, I don't recall. Anyway, for his first action, he's going to move. Now, moving um, in this game, you can move two spaces. Um, and uh, I'm going to have to, I want to just clarify movement. I want to make sure I'm getting it right because I don't want to mix up the two. You can move up to two spaces. Movement can be interrupted to perform an action. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to move here and we're going to perform an action. We're going to explore. Okay, so um, that was after we did, we uh, looked at the clue tokens and Ash Camp Pete's going to go. We're going to go back to the app and we're going to explore this door right here. Okay, let's get, uh, get going on that. This is the door we're going to look at. Ash Camp Pete's going to explore here for a second action. It says the door leads to a small front room of the mansion. Boom. Oh, wow. That's not a small front room. Oh, I guess it is, right? It says the light from the entry um, shines into the dimly lit office as you open the door. A lamp sits on a large wooden desk, casting long shadows across a mess of papers and books scattered around the room. Discard the explore tokens. Discard this explore token and place the garden uh, that that key means I think it's from um, um, the uh, Call of the Wild expansion. But we're going to get that tile out and uh, and get that done. So let me go grab that. Okay, here is the scene for Ash Camp Pete. Now we're going to also go back to the app and place some tokens. It says right here, and I'll place the token out now even though I'm looking at it on the app. That way you can see what I'm placing. Right here in this room, in this corner right here where the desk is, it says the desktop under the lamp is cluttered with papers place a search token as indicated and I have done that so I'm going to continue on from there and see what else we have to place okay I want to go back to the app and show you this because it's something you haven't seen yet outside the small room you see the see some objects abandoned in the yard among the items you spot something useful place the candles common item as indicated in an, uh, an investigator can pick up the items in this space as part of a trade action so we're going to find the candles and I'm going to place them. Okay, here are the candles. They are placed and ready to go in the garden. And uh, we're going to continue on. I'm sure there's more that we have to do here. Okay, let's continue on from there. See what else we have to do. You may move one space into the explored area and continue. Okay, so boom, we're going to continue and go to the, the we're going to move, we're going to take that option and move him into the space. I'm a little nervous because I think I went to the wrong, I think I needed to go up over there to the top corner up to this place here. But we did, uh, we're going to take that option to move in here and maybe get that, maybe go out and get these candles. We'll see. Uh, that is Ash Camp Pete's entire turn. He can't do anything else. So now we're going to go on to, that's both our characters' turns. We're going to go on to the Mythos phase. It won't be very exciting right now because there aren't any monsters out, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so to go to the Mythos phase, what we're going to do is we're going to simply do that. In the Investigator's phase, now it's asking us to confirm. And we already know that we're going to, so we confirm that. And now we go on to the mythos phase, and the, the game is going to tell us what happens. It could be something bad, could be something good. The air suddenly growl, grows stale. The mythos event affects each investigator in the foyer. We have one investigator in the foyer. That is Jenny Barnes. So let's resolve the event. Bracing your hands on your knees, you gasp for breath. Strength 2. If you pass, cool air fills your chest and you continue with determination. If you fail, you struggle for breath. Your struggle, your struggle for breath becomes more violent and blackness edges in, become dazed. Okay. Okay, so here's Jenny again. She's in the foyer. Her strength is a three. So we're basically back to rolling three dice. We got to get two successes. We are focused. So hopefully we get some clue tokens. If she fails, she will become dazed. Let's see what she gets. Uh, well, actually she got both successes without having to do anything. So she did not become dazed. That is outstanding she succeeded and we're going to send her back she's still focused and did not still has her four clues 
So we can't go wrong there, can we? Okay, let's go back to the app. I think Jenny being alone in the foyer scared the heck out of her. So let's continue. All right, that was it. That's the whole uh, mythos phase. So, well, you know, I don't mind this, this this being a longer video since it's got some great storytelling to go along with it. So let's get going again and continue on. I think that will be useful for us. Um, let's start this turn with Ash Can Pete in the garden, in the office of the garden. Okay, so for his first action, I believe that he is going to go after this token right here. Well, you know, he could move, pick this one up and move back. Let's look at what the candles actually do. So as candles, you may discard this card to convert all uh, while casting a spell. Eh, eh, eh. Useful to Jenny. Not useful to him at this point. But let's definitely investigate this as our first action. So let's go back to the app. Okay. Boom. Let's see what we get here. The desk is covered in random clutter with a small space cleared out in front of the chair for the uh, in front of the chair for working. Let's search. That's going to be his action. You dig through the dense paperwork and clutter the desktop and cluttering desktop looking for anything of interest. Now, this requires an observation. Good deal. He's got an observation of four, so let's go roll some dice. So out of Ashcan's items, the only thing he really has that's useful is clues, so I brought them over, but he does get to roll four dice, and we'll get to see how many successes we can get. Uh, well, we got two, and we got no clues, so I can't convert any clues over, so he's going to have two successes on that roll. So we go back to the app, and we go one, two, and we confirm. As you shuffle through the seemingly endless paperwork covering the desk, you spot a weathered journal that looks out of place amidst the mundane clutter. The cover of the journal is marked Lilith Vanderbilt. Gain the old journal unique item and discard this search token. The investigator holding the old journal can read through its entries by interacting with it in the app. So that's going to be an in-app item, but let me get the item out so we can have it. Here be the old journal. It says evidence. This journal entry is... This journal entry in the culprit's own handwriting is pr practically a confession. Now, we know that may not be true in this case because it's being held by, uh, it was Vanderbilt's old journal, the Lady Vanderbilt, but we'll, we'll see. So that is going to be his first action. Now, we could interact with that and read it as a second action. I also have to get rid of the clue token, sorry, search token, rather. That's going to go away. Uh, do we want to read the journal or do we want to go back and make sure Jenny's got some backup before she goes into a bad place? If he takes a second move, he can get all the way to the stairs. I think he's not going to read the journal this turn. He's going to go one and two back to the into the foyer. So as Jenny investigates, he's here to back her up and we can collect the rest of the items in here. All right, that's going to be the end of his turn. So now we're going to go to Jenny Barnes, and for her first action, she is going to move, and for her second action, she is going to explore this door. So let's go do that. Okay, here she is. We're going to explore this door here and see what happens. A ruckus can be heard on the other side of this door, shouting and th shouting the crash of pots and pans. And, and is that hissing? So there's something over there. We're opening it. We're going. We're going to explore. Boom, let's do it. Okay, the door swings open to reveal a dining room in chaos. An aging man in a tailcoat scrambles through a door uh, into the kitchen as he tries to escape a strange black creature writhing on the dining room table. Discard the explore token and place the dining room tile. As you can see, our mansion's getting rather large. I may have to uh, reorganize our play area a bit. But uh, we are going to then get rid of this clue token, that is, or search token rather, and it is gone and Jenny is now peering into this room. So let's go populate that room. Interestingly, so far, this has used all tiles from either the original base game, the first edition, or the one of the expansions. Okay, let's continue to see what's going to happen. So the first thing up, the creature turns to face you. Its black serpentine body shifts and changes, playing tricks on your eyes as you try to focus on it. The creature unfurls its leathery wings and unleashes a blood-curdling screech. Spawn a hunting horror is indicated, then suffer two horror hits, will negates. Okay, Woo, here's a hunting horror, and it's going to appear there now. What are you looking at? What are we looking at on this thing here? We got, um, this is basically, that's the horror value. That means if, if there's more than one creature, we're going to see who takes precedent. It's going to be this guy here for the horror check. And his stats here, it says, he's flying. This, this monster can move through impassable borders. Black and ropey and relentless. The creature flies swiftly, always seeking its quarry, 
its ever-changing form is hard to see for mortal eyes. And that's its health. That's what we have to defeat to kill it. Let's hope we can. But we are going to have to make a horror roll right now with Jenny Barnes. And so let me go get her character out. Okay, here is Jenny Barnes. She is going to attempt a horror check. She is going to have to use her ops or her sorry her will, which is a three. She seemed to be stuck on threes, and she is still focused with four clues. So hopefully we get luck. We get some luck. We need to make two horror successes. We did not. We failed. We got one. So we are going to take a horror hit. Now, um, how does that work? Because she was able to negate one, she is going to take one horror hit. Now what we do is we're going to draw a horror card, and we're going to flip it face up and read it and see what it says. Hopefully it's nothing terrible. Now sometimes I'll tell you to keep them down, other times I'll tell you if it says nothing, you flip it up. So, Shrieking Fit. Great. Jenny, come on now. You scream and scream and scream, and then you cry and cry, and then giggle, and then hic hiccup, or hiccough. Okay, you hiccough. Not, it says resolve immediately, become restrained, then discard this card. So we're going to have to get a restraint. Now this is going to be discarded, so I'm going to put that in the discard pile. We're going to put these cards away so she doesn't have a horror wound or horror effect on her, but we're going to have to get res the restrained um, card out. I'm going to draw the first one. There's that. This is going to be restrained. It says, you cannot move voluntarily. At the end of your turn, discard this card. So she cannot move in voluntarily into the, into the room at this point. Is this, that's only going to affect this turn. So let's continue. Okay. It says, in the center... Now, this, this we already resolved the horror effect. That was not actually part of a combat or action. That, remember, she opened the door as her action. Her second action. She moved and then opened the door. Okay, so it says, in the center of the dining table is a, car a carving knife. Knife sits embedded in a roast. Place the knife common item as indicated... And that's going to be right there on the middle of the table. Um, yeah, an investigator can pick up an item in his space as part of a trade action. Okay, let's do that. Here's the knife. You can see it's a bladed weapon. It can be, it can cut many things, including monsters. But right now, it's sitting in a roast on the table where the monster is currently at. So that's not a good thing. Let's go back to the app now. Okay, let's continue and see what else happens. A china cabinet stands against the wall. Though it looks to have been repurposed to store all manner of knickknacks, place a search token as indicated. So up here in the corner of the room is the cabinet. Okay, now let's uh, continue on. All right, moving along. What else we got? You can see a kitchen through another doorway. Most of the cabinets are ajar due to the food food preparations, but one that has been locked shut with a chain catches your attention. Place a search token as indicated. Easy enough. It's this cabinet right here, so we're going to put a search token there. Of course, we got this big monster in our way. Continuing. In the kitchen, you can also see that someone has left the refrigerator door open. Water leaks out into a puddle on the floor. Place a search token as indicated. You can see the ice box here in the corner of the kitchen. We're going to get another search token out and place it right here on the, the uh, ice box there. More to go, don't we? We got more to go. Okay, now we got to get a guy out. You spot the old man you saw flee into the kitchen, huddling in the corner behind the oven. Sweat beads off his brow and his eyes bulge in terror. Place a person token on, as indicated. This is Eugene, the butler. That's the guy that called us. And here is Eugene, cowering by the stove. Okay, we're continuing on. Boom. You may move one space into the explored area. So this is one of the ones that things I had a question on. It says you may not voluntarily voluntarily move. I assume that's a voluntary move because we are restrained right now due to this uh, the horror effect, if you recall. It says you cannot move uh, voluntarily. So I'm gonna have to assume that Jenny cannot move, take this action and move, so she won't. Okay, but that is both of our actions. So we have uh, completed Jenny's action. We have completed. Uh, Ashcan's action, and now we're going to go on to the Mythos phase again. Uh, let's see what happens. This is going to be an interesting one because we're probably going to get, you no, know, we are going to get attacked. Boom. And the Investigator's phase, yes, confirm. All right, it's the Mythos phase. Boom, 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 boom. The sound of soft voices reaches your ears. The Mythos event affects an Investigator with the highest observation. I have a feeling that's going to be Ashcan. His observation is four. And Jenny's, let's look at Jenny's. So yeah, his is four, and Jenny's is three observations, so it's going to be his. And so, um, okay, so now we got to hit continue. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read it to you. Um, 
Delorious and unsettling chanting fills the air. You gotta make a lore too. If you pass, you recognize it as an archaic but harmless requiem mass. If you fail, the alien language sends you to the edge, suffering one face down horror. Well, he does have four dice and two clue tokens, so let's hope he can do two successes. Well, he did two successes. It's weird, I'm not rolling any of the clues. But he did get two successes anyway, so he does not take that effect. So what is going to happen now? Well, let me show you on the app. Well, you have a monster now, so the hunting horror is going to move three spaces toward the investigator. Within range with the most items, that is Jenny Barnes. Then it attacks that investigator. So we're going to do the monster attacks. I take it back. It's actually Ash Campito has more items. She only has t uh, effectively three. He's got one, two, three, four. So because uh, he found that old journal, and the focus is not an item. It's a it's an like an effect. So uh, it, the thing is actually going to tear off after Ashcan. Okay, so it's going to move three, and it can definitely get to him. One, two, and it is in his space. So it flew right past Jenny through the door and went after Ashcan. Now the monster attacks. Let's see what he does. The creature beats its leathery wings and lashes at you with a tro with a, with a rope-like appendage. So that wing symbol is our agility. So we need to make an agility too. If you pass, you manage to slip from the creature's grasp and avoid the worst of its attention. If you fail, you lose your grasp on your possessions. As you are thrown around, suffer two face down damage and drop two random items. That's terrible. We cannot fail this. This is bad. The good news is dropping two items doesn't mean they go away. It means they fall, which you can pick them back up again with a trade action, but that takes time. So let's look first at Ashcan's agility. It is four, so he's definitely the best one for this role. Uh, he's got to get two successes or he suffers um, damage. And basically, again, for everyone, it says if he fails, he suffers two face down damage and drops two items, but for every success he gets, it, that'll reduce by one. So let's see what he gets here. Boom! Well, he got not only that, but he got a clue token. So he got the two that he needed. So it says, um, once again, if you pass, you manage to slip from the creature's grip and avoid the worst of its attentions. So he took a no damage in that. That is awesome because he got two successes and a clue. So he is in good shape and he avoided the, the monster's attack. So that is going to be, the I think, the end of the Mythos phase, but let's continue. Okay, we're going to confirm. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monsters, uh, the monster within range with the highest horror rating. That's going to be the, um, the, uh, this guy. <laughs> uh, it says, uh, after all horror checks have been resolved, tap the end phase button and to continue. Okay, unfortunately both of them are in range, so let's see what we have to do for this horror check. Duh, I have to pick the creature from the drawer. Okay, so we're going to confirm. Resolve a horror check. Confirm. Yes. The creature latches, uh, latches onto its surroundings, tearing them apart. Um, will 3. If you pass, you hold still, and it ignores you. If you fail, you lose your nerve and scream, drawing the beast's attention. Suffer to horror. Okay, so let's go do that with both of our guys. Okay, we're going to start with Jenny. She's got a will of three so she's gonna get three dice but remember she's got a lot of clues and she's focused so hopefully remember we have to get a three yuck right okay let's do that boom she got one so she definitely failed actually it doesn't say that she can negate it says um, if you pass your hold still ignores you but she didn't so she completely failed that means she's going to suffer two horror hits not to not reduce that it only says if they negate do you reduce that so uh, let's get to the horror deck out and see what Jenny has happened to her. The first one is hysteria. Screaming hysterically, you claw at your own flesh with your nails. Resolve immediately. Flip one damage face up, then flip this card face down. So she now has a horror hit, and we're going to take a damage. I'm going to shuffle this for the first, because I'd I, I shuffled it, but I'm just doing it to make sure. Okay, then so it does say to t flip it face up, I believe. Yep, flip one damage face up. So let's see what happens to her. Demoralizing injury. The pain makes you weak. You are not sure how you can continue. Resolve immediately. Suffer one additional face down horror, then flip this face down. Wow, okay, so she's just going to take another horror hit. Now that was only the first one. She's got to do one more, right? So let's uh, see. So <laughs> bad round for Jenny. Horrifying, horrific arcana. You whimper as your mind rejects the impossible, resolve immediately, suffer one additional face down horror hit for each spell you have. She has one, then flip this face down. So she has a feed the mind spell, which means she's going to take another horror hit. So she is immediately at 
four out of her six right now. <laughs> Jenny just got hammered. So we're going to take Jenny off the table. She's got her four horror hits and her wounds and her clue tokens that she couldn't that couldn't help her and her focused ability that couldn't help her. And we're going to move on to Ashcan, who hopefully can do better than Jenny did. Now Ashcan does have four dice, rather, but he's got no abilities or anything, just his clue tokens. So here's his four dice. Let's see what he gets. He got one, well, hmm, he can do this. He needs to get a three, and I think he's going to do it because I don't want to take all that horror hits, all those horror hits. So he's going to spend his two clue tokens to flip these both over to successes. That gives him three, which means he succeeded. Okay, let's continue on. Again, bad round for Jenny Barnes, but let's continue. I think that's going to end the Mythos phase, right? Uh, app's going slow. Just have to let it sit for a second. Oh, no, it's not. Um, that's going to be the end of that. I don't think there's anything else to go after the horror check. So we are going to continue on. And the mythos phase. Yes, the monster has moved and done its thing, and there's really nothing else to do. We've done our horror checks. It's the last thing in the mythos phase. So we're going to continue on. Let's confirm. Investigator's phase. Well, this is going to be the turn for the players to kill the beast, but we're going to stop here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here. Um, actually, how do you say it? Oh, yeah, that's right. You go to, I believe, here. Yeah, and we're going to save and quit the game. Now, Guys, I'm really concerned because I read that there's a bug that it may not save. Uh, so if that happens, man, I'm so sorry. I hope it doesn't. But it, they said it's stable on the PC version, but they don't. I, I, I'm worried about that. But let's see what happens. Save your progress and quit the game. Confirm. Okay, well, it looks like it worked. Let's see if it says continue. It does say continue. So we're going to leave it right there. Hopefully, uh, when I come back, it will be there. If not, We'll talk about that, because that will ruin our whole playthrough. In the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for the subscriptions and all the kind words and, and, and all the activity that you, give, you bring to me that makes this fun. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to playing more Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition for you as we are under assault already and have Jenny Barnes almost insane. Insanity is not the end of the game in here, though, so it's not as bad as it is in some of the other games like it. So we might be able to survive, but man, we sure are digging into this mansion. And uh, I'm really digging the way this game plays and feels. It's fun. Talk to you soon.